In this brief tutorial, we're going to add a foreign key to our existing database and our existing tables. Uh, in a previous video, you saw me add a field in my students table for faculty ID. According to my database diagram, it needs to be a foreign key. And if we look at it, you'll see the one-to-many relationship line from faculty to students, indicating that a faculty member can be assigned many students. Uh, and it's an optional because the fact that it's nullable. So not every student will get a faculty member from the start. And it's an FK next to it in our diagram, so we know it's a foreign key. Now to do this in SQL, the whole, whole intent is so that when we add students' records in, and if they have a faculty ID, or if we're updating a student to assign a faculty ID, we're only using valid faculty members that exist in our faculty table. So what we're gonna end up doing here is we're gonna go with alter table again, just like we did when we added our field. The name of our table, TBL students. The next thing we're doing is we're adding a constraint And we're going to call that constraint FK faculty ID. Essentially, the FK meaning foreign key, and then it's going to be on the field of faculty ID. It, then we say it's going to be a foreign key as the type of constraint. And then the name of the field again, that's in our current table. And it, what it's going to reference using the references command, um, which is going to be the faculty table and it's going to reference the field faculty ID in that table. With our field names being the same in each table, it's pretty straightforward to follow uh, and easy to follow. You'll see a lot of examples sometimes when you don't always have the same field name in each table, so it's a little bit more confusing to follow uh, and to apply it. But know that here we're adding the constraint of the making the foreign key in our students table because that's the table we're altering. This is the name of that constraint. You previously saw this if you watched my other tutorials when we added a primary key. Uh, the type of constraint, here's a foreign key. And then it's going to be on the field, whatever field in this current table is going to be inside of these parentheses. So here, in this case, we're saying we're adding it on the field of faculty ID, which exists in this table. And if we used a different name for some reason in this table, we would just change that out here. And the same goes, this is going to reference, meaning it's going to look up to this table, TBL faculty, and check to see if this field has a value that we're trying to enter when we add a new student in that has a faculty ID given. Uh, so if we execute this here, we're going to see it complete successfully. And if we were to refresh our students table by right clicking, what we can see now, if we expand, you'll see an FK next to our faculty ID and the key. And the difference is it's pointing the other direction of the primary key and it's not bold. And if you open up keys, you'll see it's there. FK underscore faculty ID is what I named it. Uh, another little thing I just want to point out real quick in this brief little alter table data definition language script here is you've been seeing this in previous videos. You'll see words that turn blue in SQL when you're in the command line. Those are reserved words. Those are actual words that have meaning in SQL Server to perform an action. So a good way when you're reading scripts to, to kind of see what words are part of the language of the built-in um, reserved words of the SQL language as they turn blue. Another thing to note, I talked about this previously before, but SQL Server is very flexible in terms of putting commands across multiple lines. This could have been all on one line uh, and I chose to put it on multiple lines, and I do that for readability. If I wrote this just all across one line, it's harder to follow. So again, 
Try to use some best practices in naming conventions, formatting, and structure your code. Just some good overall tips as you're learning more about SQL Server and working with the SQL language. Uh, if you have any questions on how this was done, if you have any challenges, feel free to reach out in the comments section below. I hope you consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, you can additionally find me and reach out to me directly at professorwolf.com. Thank you.